Welcome back to DCS and welcome back to the DCS F-16 Viper. This is a video on flying approaches with the F-16. It's really aimed at people that are new to the aircraft and want to uh, get a good firm grasp on how to fly approaches. This is not a perfect approach. I'm a little bit rusty myself, so I'm kind of relearning the whole process. I'm also familiarizing myself with the Thrustmaster Warthog stick which I don't normally use, it's a little bit stiff for me but for a combat simulator it's really uh, it's really useful to, ha to have so many buttons and controls uh, easily available what I would say about the Thrustmaster Warthog the, and I'm talking really about the standard stick, I'm not talking about an extended stick but it is stiffer than other sticks, I usually use the MS Sidewinder force feedback stick, which is much looser. One of the issues with the Warthog stick is that when you are manipulating pitch, you will also get roll unless you are setting a dead zone. So, one of the things that I would absolutely recommend if you're starting out with the F 16 or with any aircraft in DCS is set curves for the stick, specifically roll. In the sim, I would start on the ground, bring up the input box, which is, I think, control and enter, and just try pushing the stick forward and back, and just see if you can push it straight in, in kind of normal, in normal use. You know, you can be really scientific and just manage to get it straight, but just try pushing the stick forward and back as you normally would do, and see if there's any roll in there, and there most likely is going to be roll. That manifests itself flying the approach because you're going to be manipulating pitch and you're going to get unwanted roll which you then have to correct for and that's just another element that you want to avoid. So set the smallest dead zone that you can and also set a curve that is going to smooth out the movement between the dead zone and actual input. You don't want a, a, uh, a vertical wall between the dead zone and actual input, you want to smooth that out sounds complicated but in practice it's really simple you're really just looking at dead zone and curvature and as I say you're looking to smooth out uh, that input also I'd recommend setting a button or key for it's the uh, velocity switch on the right console that switch controls the display of, of uh, speed between airspeed and ground speed so it's really useful when you're on the ground to be able to switch easily to ground speed display. Also I find the hardest part of the approach and landing for me is straight after touchdown you're trying to hold the gun cross on the 10 degree pitch ladder. I'll explain that more visually when we actually come to the landing itself. I find that difficult and I also find it difficult to keep the, to keep the aircraft straight on centre line. That is uh, probably also going to be a bit of a challenge for you. Um, once you get below 80 knots you can then switch on nose wheel steering. As you can see here I'm, I'm holding the nose off to help with aero braking to help slow the aircraft down. Um, also the speed brakes are extended. So you see there's some movement, there's some oscillations. I'm trying to keep the nose up, but also keep center line. So yeah, below 80 knots, you can engage nose wheel steering, which makes it a lot easier. Braking initially without nose wheel steering, you have to be careful, you have to be progressive with it, and you have to be able to modulate uh, braking. So this is where a good set of rudder pedals is gonna really help. My uh, MFG crosswinds have an issue with the right um, with the right brake where it's not giving quite 100% so I have to kind of change the curves on the brake pedals to accommodate that which is not ideal but once you've got nose wheel steering on it's a lot easier to steer and it's a lot easier to be more firm with braking so that's basically an overview of the technical side of things in the next part of the video we're actually going to look at the approach and landing itself and hopefully we're going to get some uh, 
solid information across in that part of the video. You see here, it's just getting the, sp the ground speed below 20 knots, just to make this, this turn easier. Okay, straight away we get a bingo warning. What does that mean? Obviously it means we are short of fuel. Key thing is when you're setting up one of these approaches, don't start with too much fuel because your approach speed is going to be higher and it's going to take you longer to slow the aircraft down on rollout. First thing we're doing, bringing power back, opening the speed brake. Uh, the reason we use speed brake is the jet engine is quite laggy it doesn't give you an instant response so there's a little bit of a gap even on a piston engine aircraft you're not always going to be using uh, power for vertical speed and pitch for airspeed for example when you're meeting a glide slope you're going to point the aircraft with pitch and onto the glide slope and then adjust power so you know, don't get too hung up on the whole um, power for vertical speed and uh, pitch for airspeed idea okay once we extend or once we load the landing gear we get two extra elements on the hood we already have the flight path marker what is the flight path marker we put the flight path marker where we want to go and we fly there so we want the flight path marker uh, initially we, we're holding it level altitude because we're looking for the second of those two or the first of those two of elements which is the dashed uh, 2.5 degree pitch line and once that 2.5 degree pitch line is on the runway threshold then we bring the, F the flight path marker down onto the FPM onto the um, onto that 2.5 degree uh, pitch line now the third element is the um, the angle of attack staple which looks like a step you can completely ignore the angle of attack index on the left I mean it, it, it's there and you can reference it but really we're looking to bring all those three elements together the flight path marker the 2.5 degree pitch line and the angle of attack staple now initially there may be a big gap between the flight path marker the 2.5 degree pitch line and the staple the staple might be way low as long as your airspeed is decreasing that will creep up so don't be in a hurry don't th feel that you've got to rush that it will come up by itself if airspeed stops going down then reduce power until airspeed starts to decrease again okay we're keeping the FPM the 2.5 degree pitch line at the top of that staple that shows us that we have an 11 degree angle of attack the kind of up chevron on the angle of attack index there is telling us that we're too fast. We're not that we're not that much faster than we should be, you know, for touchdown. The final phase of this is going to be the flare, where you will see the donut on the angle of attack index. This isn't a perfect landing. I landed a little bit harder than I'd like to, but it's relatively down and centre line, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using this for demonstration purposes. But this is not meant to be, oh look, there's a perfect landing, okay. This could, you know, I could land this aircraft a little bit better. Okay, so as we cross the threshold, pull back on power, pull back on the stick, we get the donut, we get 13 degrees, angle of attack. Two sounds a little bit hard, yeah, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Now you could, you could come down all the way at 13 degrees, but that's a little bit awkward. You lose a little bit of vision at the bottom of the hood. And also, if you if you're coming in at 11 degrees, you have to when you flare, you're pulling back on the stick, and that helps with aero braking. So here we are, crossing the threshold, flaring. We'd be a little bit late on the flare. Now it's it's a question of holding back, holding, holding, holding. See the the gun cross at the top of the hood. I'm trying to keep that on the 10 degree pitch line, which is I find really really difficult. I'm going to put it down to the uh, water stick. The idea is you lower the uh, nose onto the tarmac at about 90 knots 
I can't do that, I can't hold it up that long, it, it just won't stay up long enough for me to do that. See, it's a bit of a struggle here, keeping it on centre line, trying to progress your braking. This is an art in itself, just modulating the braking on left and right, keeping it straight as well as using the rudder. The rudder is not massively effective as much as differential braking is going to be, I think. Slowing it down, as you can see on the right indexer, nose wheel steering is activated and we can be more aggressive with the braking. Switching the ground speed for the hood and then it's just a simple case of taxiing off the runway. Uh, closing the speed brake, maybe even opening the canopy depending on how hot it is then. Um, so that is a basic approach and landing in the F-16. Again, it's not a perfect landing, but hopefully it gives you, as a newcomer to DCS, as a newcomer to the F-16, some ideas on what you're looking for on the approach and also some technical aspects of making sure your controller is giving you the best chance of a somewhat flawless landing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, hope you found it useful, and as always, feel free to like, comment and subscribe.